we had grown to be quite a larger firm. We had a litigation department, we had a corporate department, we had a labor department, and um, Ernie and I and Mike Rubel, we had this dream of having a firm that was really much more just a transactional entertainment firm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, primarily it was Ernie Dell, Michael Rubel, who's you know now a partner at CAA, and myself, and we, we started this firm. How did you decide what other partners to bring in? Um, it was kind of an interesting uh, story because we just kind of said, we'll leave. We're leaving and we'll just fare on our own and then people wanted to join us. Mm -hmm. So originally we thought we would only be about the three of us, four of us, because Greg Darren was also part of that group. Got to give him credit. And um, we thought maybe one or two younger lawyers would follow us. And in fact, the firm split and ultimately dissolved because so many people wanted to work with us. Mm -hmm. Was um, diversity ever a factor in who you were wanted to work with on your team? Well, yes, it's everything. Mm -hmm. Because um, I would never want to be in an environment that wasn't open to people like me. So even at the very beginning, Jean Tanaka, who's an Asian American woman, joined us. We always had, from the very day we opened our door, we had a fairly diverse group of people of color, women, the whole bit. We were different always from the outset, and as we have matured over the years as a firm, this is very important to me. This is, I always say to people when they ask me, I say, it's like the air I breathe. So I come in here every day, and I can take deep breaths, and I can be comfortable because I'm in a place that is a place that I want to be and looks like a place I want to be. And the thing that always confuses me, is the only way I can explain it, is how people can breathe in those other rooms. What about the clientele that you decide to represent? Is it a factor there too? It's less of a factor. I think, you know, the, the, the hardest part I think for me sometimes in being the lawyer that I've grown to be, and, and I think you can tell even when I talk to you about deals, I am really enthusiastic about the work I do. First and foremost, the work I do is what has driven me. My interest in the work and I think my skill set has driven me. But, um, I've often had to fight first the battles of diversity and inclusion because I can't get to the work without them. You know? It would be so nice, you know. I think I heard um, Sidney Poitier say once in an interview that some days he wanted to just be an actor. But he couldn't just be an actor, he had to be an actor and a civil rights advocate. Now, I am proud of my advocacy, um, and I would not imagine my life in any other way, but I do think about sometimes, what if I could be like my peers, many of my peers, and I could just get up every day and be the best lawyer possible. I try, still strive to do that, but I have to make all, room for all of these other things. So you feel that sense of social responsibility and advocacy all the time? All the time. Every minute of my life, every minute of my day. Mm -hmm. Did you have, um, with Ernie Dell, when you decided to form this company, um, any kind of overarching goal or mission of what you wanted to accomplish that would distinguish you guys from other firms? Well, we always knew that we would be a diverse and inclusive firm. And, and I really give Ernie and uh, Michael Rubel a lot of credit because there was no other option for me. This was who I was and I could not be anything else. They, had, they were white men, they had other options. And in fact, um, a number of people in the business, a number of very prominent agents, for, for instance, had really counseled, perhaps Ernie more so than Michael, but had counseled both of them that they could make alliances with them with other men and that they would be far better served as lawyers in, in their career in those kinds of alliances than they would be in a law firm with me. Interesting. So one of the decisions that they had to make um, and when I talk to them about it, and Michael and Rubel and I in particular have talked about it this recently because he's kind of going through a career transition himself, um, th that he didn't think there was any other choice. But I always marveled at the fact that they didn't think there was any other choice and they kind of linked arms with me and went out. But that was not something that people in our business were uniformly supporting mm -hmm. or counseling them. Like kind of their wise rabbis were saying in some cases, well, why do you want to do that? Or why don't you want to do this? And why her? And who is she? 